It's weapon day and I'm actually pretty excited for this one. Before we get into talking about it though, we gotta max it first. Since she and her weapon are from Inazuma, we might not have much, if any, farming to do at all because I just have a lot of mats from Inazuma. As you can see, 1800 chaos gears here. We definitely don't need any of those. In terms of resin mats, I think I'm good, but I could have miscounted and I hope not because I don't believe they're open today. There is level 40 anyway. You can see already almost 50% crit damage. It's pretty crazy. Level 50 with 57. We can just keep going for now. There's level 70, 72 crit damage, possibly even higher than Redhorn. We do need six golds here. We have everything else without even going to the crafting station. Actually crazy. Thankfully, we are right next to the crafting station. Risley bonus, two bonus, Ayaka bonus, no bonus. Okay, dang, that was really close though. We literally only have one extra purple because we definitely need all five of those. Let's see if Risley will give us a bonus anyway. He did, Risley MVP. But here we go, last star here. I think this will have the same stats as Redhorn. Yes, 88 crit damage. So just the stats alone, already incredible. But then let's take a look at that passive. It's actually good, like for other people besides Chiori. That's crazy. Normal attack damage and elemental skill damage is increased here. Lots of DPSs do damage with one or the other if not both, and 16 and 24% are pretty decent buffs there. Then after a nearby active character deals geo damage, the effects are increased by 100%. So 32% normal attack skill and 48% elemental skill damage. So if you want those extra buffs there, I do feel like it's worth it, as long as that geo in your team would be good anyway. Like Zhongli is good in almost every team. The weapon does also give 20% death down here. For most sword users, that's just a whatever bonus, like who cares, it's deaf. But there's one in particular it would actually be pretty good for. Albedo, obviously, he scales with deaf. Does he finally get an actual signature besides a four star Cinnabar? But besides the obvious Albedo, who else can use it? What I like to do is just go into the character archive and choose sword so we can, ooh, we have a lot of sword users. And right off the bat, I can see so many that could just use it well. Would be good on skill DPS Farina. Her summons do a lot of damage. All Hate Them does lots of normal attack damage, though I guess also charged and burst damage. So it would still be good on him for sure because of the base stats and because he does actually take advantage of normal and skill damage also. Ayato might be one of the better use cases actually because he does mainly normal attacks. I will be honest though, I don't use Ayato very often at all. Ayaka, pretty sure she does more charge attacks than normal, but her skill damage can be pretty good. Again, same story with Kaching. I just think she does more charge attacks, but also definitely some normals in there as well. There are maybe some edge cases like DPS, Jean, or Nilu, but I personally feel like these units are better as supports. We are gonna start with the most obvious choice for this weapon, and that's gonna be Albedo. Cinnabar is such an insane weapon for Albedo though, so I'm not even sure if it's that much better than Cinnabar. Just in terms of raw stats, we are still getting 20% def, which means we're only losing 49 by swapping off of Cinnabar. I don't think the normal attack damage bonus will really matter, so let's not even count that for Albedo, but still 48% skill damage as opposed to Cinnabar, which scales off of death. That's kind of like a completely different thing. So I don't even really know how to calculate that. It's always a little hard when it comes to weapons and comparisons, but we will try and compare Cinnabar to Uraku here. I would also assume Golden Troop is going to be the most important for him. It matches his color scheme, though, since we're already getting so much skill damage or just, you know, damage percent multiplier from the weapon, it is possible Husk is straight up better. Husk alone gives us 54% death, which is basically everything else from Cinnabar we are losing and 24% geo damage bonus. I'll assume right now Golden Troop is still better and give him that though. We also do have some pretty nice pieces like this one with 26 def on it. Let's one shot this geo damage goblet. Ooh, okay, we got actually a lot of def rolls, but we are going to lock on crit stats or at least crit rate. So we probably have to go crit rate circlet and we still don't have enough. I don't have a single def sands with crit rate on it. Okay, guess we gotta raise one. This one doesn't look bad. Let's also one shot it. Here we go. Come on, crit stats. Zero crit rate. Are you joking? A lot of energy recharge for whatever that's worth. The only other def sands I have with crit rate on them uh, don't have other good stats. So we're just going to try this one that starts with four. Uh, you know, we have one extra chance to actually get a crit rate roll there, even though the other three subs are useless. Last chance here. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. I think we got three rolls into crit rate because I'm pretty sure HP and EM only, only went once. Okay, well, well, we'll actually have to take that, which is still not a very good artifact, but it's better than everything else I have. So we still got the four piece set going there and actually a slightly more respectable 61 crit rate. Still not insanely good or anything, but I can't do anything more. So our final stats, we got 1200 attack, 2100 def, 61 crit, 174 crit damage, very little energy charge, though I don't think he really needs it, and 75 geo damage bonus. We also have some hidden stats like big elemental skill damage, but one thing I wanna make sure of is if Albedo himself counts as the nearby character, 
dealing geo damage. I am assuming it does, but I just like to make 100% sure about these things. So 2146 def, we're just going to do a geo attack here. Okay, still 2146 def. It is also possible we just get that 20% def by default because of how it's worded. It just says additionally you get 20 def. But we're gonna throw another geo in our team. Like Zhongli here does not provide any def buffs. So we're just gonna do that. And now we do have up arrows, but still 2146 def. The up arrows are because of four piece tenacity giving us an attack boost. It should be relatively easy to see. We're just gonna swap to key here. It doesn't really matter. This does not give us any def. So if we lose def, that means we're just getting this 20% by default. Yeah, we lost def. So there is no actual trigger requirements for the death, which unfortunately means it's going to be very hard to see if we actually get the elemental skill damage increase with Albedo himself triggering the geo attacks. So we're just going to take note of his current elemental skill damage and see if that goes up uh, when we do a, a Navia attack first. So we got a 16 there, 16 there, okay. Seeming to be pretty consistent, 16. So basically what we're going to do now is just refresh that re real quick. And then uh, we're going to do a Navia attack here. Oh no, wait. Oh, it's more because he's currently off field, um, but that's fine. So now we're gonna go back to Albedo. Oh no, wait a second, 17. Oh, wait a minute. I think the weapon glows when the uh, passive is uh, doubled. As you can see, it's currently not glowing, but when we attack, and do the actual skill damage, it starts to glow. That's the only thing that could mean, right? Though it is a little confusing because when we uh, actually swap out to Navia to do a Geo attack, we're doing 17.6 instead of 16K. And we do that for way more than two seconds because with Golden Troop, it says two seconds after taking the field, it goes away, but that's definitely longer than, than two seconds. Am I misremembering something? Does Navia give me some sort of buff anywhere? Her weapon doesn't give buffs. Her artifact set doesn't give buffs. It's two-piece hunter set right now. She sees zero. That's so confusing. Oh, wait, I may have figured it out. <laughs> Maybe Masanori's HP was below 50% HP for those 17Ks, and we're doing 25% extra damage. But you see what I'm talking about? There's just so many variables you have to think about when testing or comparing anything. Okay, we're gonna kill him real quick and try again. So we also have a Midnight Masanori now, so he shouldn't be below 50% HP from a simple Navia E. So are we still doing 16K? If we are, then everything is good. 16K, okay, even though we just did a Navia E, we're still doing 16K. So just to be totally clear, because this is probably going to be very messy now, you don't need another geo to trigger the 100% increased you know passive here I know that was probably obvious to most of you but sometimes the wording is weird and inconsistent so I just wanted to make sure so now that we know that we can go back to solo albedo I just want to try and do as much of an apples to apples comparison as possible we did already see he was doing approximately 16k per skill tick solo which I think is pretty good before any sort of other buffs <laughs> Yeah, 16127. And since Albedo's flower can only trigger once every two seconds, we don't have to worry about one of them not using Cinnabar because that has a 1.5 second cooldown. So just swapping over to Cinnabar Spindle and doing nothing else, I feel like would be the closest to accurately comparing them but in a real world situation, I probably would build him a little differently. I mean, he only has 85% crit damage now. It's just a little hard because I'm only gonna be looking at critical damage numbers. So if I give him like 40 crit rate and you know, 110 crit damage or whatever, it's just gonna be more in favor of Cinnabar Spindle. I will try and make it at least a little bit closer to, you know, a one to two ratio. Like maybe we'll just swap this sands over. You know, it, it has a little bit of crit damage and a little bit less crit rate. So now we're a little bit closer to a one to two ratio. We obviously do have less crit damage because we just swapped off a a sword with 90% crit damage on it. No, nah. Ooh, wait a second. Now, now Cinnabar is actually working, I think. 15-6, it's actually so much closer than I thought it would be. Even though we have so much less crit damage, the uh, passive on Cinnabar is, is just nuts. So yeah, I mean, the five star is better, but like not even by much. So basically, yeah, I mean, especially if you have Cinnabar, don't get this for Albedo. It's not that much better. Talking about I'll Hate Them though, his signature has the exact same stats as Uraku, and that is of course because I'll Hate Them scales better with EM than attack. The passives actually are incredibly similar as well. In his signature's case, it's normal and elemental skill buff, but it's based on EM. Uraku is just a flat 32 normal and 48 skill damage. Doesn't matter what his EM is. In this case though, you would need a Geo in your team to trigger the extra 100%. I don't use I'll Hate Them that often, but I'm pretty sure in his strongest teams like Hyperbloom, there isn't a Geo. So without doing math or comparisons, 
I would wager a bet that it's not better than his signature, which should be the case always anyway. The signature weapon of the character should be their best weapon. Like, I know that's not always the case, especially as we get new weapons and new metas evolve and stuff, especially with like Farina now. That being said, if you don't have a signature, this does seem like an incredibly good weapon for him. Again, same base stats, and you, st and you still do get the normal and skill damage bonuses. Even if you don't have another Geo in your team, you know, 16 and 24, still solid little buffs there. I'll hate them would be a lot harder to test, especially for trying to do a full rotation with Hyper Blooms. There's just so many different things you gotta watch out for. So I think we can still test him and basically just see what the difference of 150% of EM is versus just a flat buff. We definitely wouldn't have to mess with artifacts since the base stats are exactly the same. So we'll just build him as best as I can. I still unfortunately haven't gotten around to building a good gilded set yet. I guess partially because I just don't have good luck. We don't have a single elemental mastery sands and not even a single dendro goblet. So we literally can't make a four piece set anyway. So when I do play with him, I usually go mostly broken set. So I've built him the best I could for now. Unfortunately, not that great. I mean, we have 245 EM. I usually would like to have a bit more. Obviously, in a full team with like Nahida's buffs and everything, I think we could get a lot more, but uh, we have a decent crit ratio there. A lot of Dinjo damage bonus. So I think especially in this case, uh, he's going in with a pretty big disadvantage with the signature weapon. Since its buff is directly scaled with Element of Mastery and we would get a lot more Element of Mastery in a full team. Uh, we're just gonna like start with a skill here and then uh, do some normal attacks. I mean, I don't know. We're getting like between five and seven K for a normal attack there and like 13 K for his skill. Yeah, so the highest I'm seeing from his normal attacks is 7146. Six. His skill is between 13 and 14k. It changes here and there, but that's about the ballpark. Oh, we did get a 14.8 skill attack though, so his skill attack is a little higher, but again, in a full team, we're gonna be getting a lot of EM buffs and actually boosting his signature a lot. His normal attacks definitely are lower though. The highest I've seen so far is like a 67.99 right there as you can see like i said though without just doing math it'd be way too hard to see in a real team what it's actually doing just looking at it though it is a good weapon for him i would just say not as good as the signature as far as farina goes it actually gives the same elemental skill damage bonus at base than her signature weapon they also do have exactly the same base stats if you have a geo in your farina team though it actually does give twice as much elemental skill damage the one thing it doesn't give is hp this gives 28 percent. this gives zero of course and until c6 i don't think Think Farina is going to do a lot of normal attack damage, so it is at least comparable. Though to be honest, I'm, I'm actually using key on her more than her signature weapon. Farina, I guess, is another example with one of those edge cases. I mean, especially in certain teams, key can definitely just straight up be better than her signature because her signature is very selfish, only giving buffs to herself. But the key gives buffs to everyone based on her HP, and Farina's HP is going to be high, especially with key and just in general. Also, if you ever at C2, it's just going to be kind of going nuts. But personally, I would only consider Urak if you would naturally take a Geo in your team. Even then, it's a little iffy. 28% versus 24% skill damage. Eh. Lynette is a bit of a skill DPS, I suppose. I haven't played with her much at all. She's not even C6 yet, because at C6, she gives herself an Animo Infusion and can kind of main DPS, so the normal attack buff here would also be pretty good. Basically, what I'm saying is for any sword-wielding damage dealer, it's going to be really good. Maybe not best in slot for most of them, except Albedo and, of course, Chiori, but if you want a really solid sword that can be used on pretty much anyone to at least a pretty good degree, this is it. And I'm really happy because lately the swords have all been super hyper focused on the character they're designed for. And this is not the case. It's very versatile. The weapon does look really good with her. I know we didn't check out the drip for the summons because I was very irritated at those horrible summons, but yeah, it looks nice. The one sort of niche-ish thing is that you do need a Geo to fully max out the passive, and I don't feel like that's that big of a deal. The passive is still perfectly fine without a Geo, and if you have Zhongli, he's so good in a lot of teams anyway. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the new weapon. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.